Hello, dear friends. Welcome to Digital English Teacher page. My name is Irana, and today I'm going to share one wonderful resource that I consider to be a must-have for everyone who wants to um, improve their writing skills, um, especially if you are preparing for academic exams like IELTS, CAE, CPE, etc. Uh, so let me uh, get really practical here and show you what this resource does. So um, the website is called COCA, C-O-C-A, and it stands for Corpus of Contemporary American English. It's a huge database of all English words used in different contexts. And this website um, has several functions like list, chart, collocate, compare, uh, keyword in context, um, but I will show you, of course, that there's a lot of things to do, um, and unfortunately, it's not really user-friendly, so you will have to um, get really practical here. You will have to explore the site on your own, but I will share um, the most, um, I would say, interesting functions, practical functions that you can use with your students or um, on your own. Um, so previously to using the site, just make sure that you are a registered user. So you will have to fill in a registration form and once you're logged in, you will be able to, um, to use all the functions. So we are here at on the main page and list group. Um, I will type in um, just any word, let's take tangible, tangible. And once I click on find matching strings, I will be able to see 3,716 uh, sentences where this word is used. Um, it might work great as a substitute to um, a dictionary. Um, if you, for example, don't want your students to use just like direct translation so it's great once once you um read all the all these examples you will be able uh, hopefully to generate meaning on your own um apart from that uh it's uh, also a great uh, tool when you want to correct your students like very recently my students said something like tangible person which is not correct we all know this um, and what we did, we went through several examples, like 20 or 30 sentences, and um, he could see that tangible world, tangible flow, tangible things, um, these are the collocations uh, that, um, um, so tangible is used with inanimate things like something that is not alive. And uh, after reading these sentences, of course, of course we, um, we could make sure that um, tangible is used mostly with uh, things. Um, now, when we want, for example, to work a little bit more with collocation, and we want maybe to know um, what prepositions uh, follow, a particular word, let's take, for example, afraid of, afraid of, um, and click on key words in context. Mm -hmm. So again, we click on search. So you'll be able to see what parts of speech are used with this particular phrase or this particular word um, just because um, nouns are given in um, here, you can you can see uh, in blue color like lawsuit, competition, dirt. Um, adjectives uh, are green. Uh, prepositions are um, yellow. So it's definitely uh, a good thing to to have a good thing to to use especially for visual learners, especially if you want to um, bring to students' attention some uh, grammar, some structures. And here also you can see that uh, in most cases, um, uh, afraid is followed uh, by um, like being, anything here. So everything is given in alphabetical order and preceded by be. So here, 
are, was, is, 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 be, was. So that's a great thing also to show, uh, to explore and to investigate. Now, I would like also to show you one more function that I particularly like and um, um, especially if you want to find synonyms, especially if maybe even if you want to um, just to get the idea of what the word means. So by simply adding an equation mark to the word and clicking on list again, Uh, when you are using free account, uh, very often you will see um, a notification like upgrade account. Um, so you will have to wait uh, for quite a while <laughs> until you see this message. Click here to continue with your search. I'm absolutely okay with that, so uh, it's not a problem for me to wait. So here I have the list of synonyms like afraid, scared, anxious, frightened, and so on. Plus, on the right-hand side, there is also the um, frequency uh, bar that you can see, um, how frequent the word is used. And again, by clicking on the words, you will be able to see, again, example sentences. So it's definitely uh, a great thing to have. Um, what else? Now, one more function that I... Um, use uh, and I like is just perfect when you teach uh, writing, especially for academic exams. Um, you know, there's often um, a confusion, a huge confusion uh, between the words uh, and their register. So if, for example, we click on here, chart, uh, and we take uh, Freak, let's say freak. We all know that it's um, quite colloquial and it's not really used um, in academic context. Um, but just to prove and show it to our students, we um, we can find the statistics where um, this particular word is used. So it's mostly used. We can see that it's mostly used in fiction and uh, very little in academic English. So. Um, also, by clicking on this rectangle, uh, you'll be able to see the sources uh, where this statistics is taken from. So definitely a great thing to have. Or for instance, if we um, take word abolish, that's definitely an academic one. So once we again click on see frequency by section, um, we'll be able to see that um, it's mostly of academic usage. Um, also, there is uh, statistics on years, uh, how popular this word is. Um, so definitely a great thing just maybe to um, be aware of. Plus, by clicking on academic, you'll be able also to see areas where this word is used. So, for example, law, uh, history, um, and very little in, for example, in technology. It's used very little in technology. Um, so that's basically it. Um, these are the um, probably the ways I use this website. Um, please uh, feel free to share your approaches and your usage. Um, of this website. Bye-bye. Take care.